Thank you, Nathan. So my sermon today is the next in a series that I've been giving called Building Your Spiritual Palace. And I've been using the metaphor of constructing a palace to represent building the perfect relationship with God. A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that when we begin construction, we need a construction fence and that for us to build a construction fence, our part is simply to commit to God that we're seeking to build the best kind of relationship we can have with God. And when we commit to God in this way, God is our wall of protection. Uh, last week I talked about that the building materials for the construction of our spiritual palace, the bricks are the hours that we spend in worship, in praise, in reading the Bible, in service to God. Uh, the uh, framework for our construction is our integrity and honesty, our compassion towards others, and our basic commitment to God. And the, uh, the glue, the mortar that holds everything together is our passion for God. Today I'm going to talk about having a vision for what we want to accomplish, our blueprints. But before I get to that, I want to start with a story about the importance of having a clear vision. An old snake went to the doctor's office. He said, I have a problem with my eyes. I think I need glasses. The doctor gave him an eye exam, said, yes, you need glasses. He said, I'm giving you a prescription here. Come back next week and let's see how, how you made out. So he comes back the next week. The doctor says, how are the glasses working out? The snake says, well, they're terrific. He said, I can see really perfectly now, but now I'm really depressed. The doctor said, why are you so depressed? He said, well, my girlfriend I've been snuggling up with for the last two years turns out to be a garden hose. Yeah, it's important to have a clear vision. Well, let's join together for a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, I thank you for the awesome privilege and responsibility of again sharing your word with your congregation this morning. I pray, Lord, that all that I say and all that we hear would be acceptable in your sight, for you are our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Thank you, Lord. So... I served a church in Brandon before coming here called St. Andrews. I was one of three pastors, and uh, one of my jobs at St. Andrews was to be on the building committee. I was the liaison person for the staff to the building committee, and in that time, we had four major construction projects. We had uh, two renovations, and we built two buildings that were the size of small palaces, million-dollar buildings. And in that time, I learned a lot about construction. And one of the things I learned is the importance of this document. This is like the master document for construction. This is the master document for the upstairs of the foundry building in the back of our property, just the upstairs. Uh, this weighs about five pounds at least. It's quite a document. And every nut and bolt, every wire, every uh, construction material you can think of for that whole building is in here, and the one for the downstairs is bigger than this. It covers not just the foundation, but even all the way from the foundation, from below the foundation to the ground and up. The, the pipes going in, every single pipe, every single conduit before any cement was poured for the foundation, all that stuff was in place because of the blueprint. Now, when we go to build a spiritual palace, we don't need the same level of detail. This book right here, the Bible, is a great blueprint for us. It lets us know, especially in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, what's possible for us as apostles, the highest heights of what we can achieve as Christians. It gives us a great vision and our coming to worship services, listening to sermons, studying the Bible. Uh, these things help us to form a clear vision of what God would like us to have and what we might like to have in terms of the perfect relationship with God. Now, some people 
think it's a great idea to be able to encapsulate what you believe, to put what you believe into a very short statement called a vision statement. This is what I think God wants me to do. Um, it's a, for those of you that have been involved in the business world, you know that almost all big businesses have a vision statement. They think it's very important to get a short statement that everybody in the organization knows what it is so that they can understand, here's what we are trying to do, trying to be, uh, hoping to accomplish. And I've been to many seminars over the years to try and help us to learn as a church how to make a vision statement. Um, it's based on the idea in Proverbs, oh, sorry, in Proverbs uh, 28, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. So when we realize that our vision statement as a church is about what God wants us to do and what God wants us to be as a church, it's really important that we get it right. And I think our church has gotten our vision statement right. Um, we uh, worked on it a number of years ago. We had a committee of seven people and we took a survey of the congregation. We handed out, some of you may remember this, we handed out on Sunday morning a form and we ask you to fill out, fill in the blank. I believe that the most important thing God wants us to do is. And we took those uh, survey results in our committee. We boiled it all down and I asked the committee, if possible, let's come up with a vision statement that summarizes what God wants us to do in seven words or less. It was quite a challenge, but we were able to do it. And the seven words we came up with were, loving God, loving others, and loving life. And uh, those seven words present in a very small uh, sentence the two great commandments of Christ to love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, and I think that's a great vision statement to live by. I, I've adopted it as my vision statement, uh, loving God, loving others, and loving life. But whether you have a uh, vision statement or not, what's really key is that you have a vision of what you want to accomplish for God, what, you would, what your relationship would look like if it was a perfect relationship, and what your service to God might look like if you were doing exactly what God wanted and exactly what you wanted in serving God. Now maybe you are in a place where you're saying, right now, things in my life are too hectic, too chaotic, too busy, too demanding. So someday, things in my life will get better, things will slow down, and I'll be able to take some time to build my relationship with God, but not right now. Well, there's an old saying, goals are the fuel in the furnace of achievement. Goals are the fuel in the furnace of achievement. The trick is, moving our some days from something that we say to ourselves to make us feel better because we can't do it now to something that is a goal that we set for ourselves and we say, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to accomplish that. Uh, W.C. Fields once said this, remember, even a dead fish can float downstream, but it takes a live one to swim upstream. Unfortunately, uh, some people take the dead fish approach to their religion. Uh, they just kind of float along downstream, whatever goes along is okay. Uh, there's, their relationship is the same this year as it was last year, and they have no plans to make their relationship next year be any better than it is this year. Now, Yogi Berra once famously said this, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. Now, what if we give ourselves permission to know where we're going, to set that lofty goal of having the perfect relationship with God and of knowing exactly how God wants us to make a difference? Now, maybe at this time, it's difficult for you to conceive of what a perfect relationship for you would look like with God. But what really matters is that you set a goal and you start working towards it. Goals are about setting a target for yourself and aiming for it. 
Now, I did this uh, survey a couple of years ago. How many of you here have, have shot a bow and arrow before? Take a look around. Almost everybody. Well, for those of you that haven't, I'll just tell you this. When you shoot a bow and arrow, you aim at the target straight ahead, you let go, and when you do, the arrow will travel straight for a distance, but then gravity takes its toll and the arrow will drop. But if you aim high and you fire your arrow, well, it goes about three times farther. And that's true in life as well. If we aim high, we will go farther. Uh, the uh, famous artist Michelangelo once wrote this. The greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it is too low and we reach it. So when it comes to our relationship with God, we need to aim high. Now when we're building a spiritual palace, it's just in some ways similar to a physical palace in that the foundation can go in quickly and the frame can go up quickly, but then everything else takes a lot longer. In our case, it can take years to really build that kind of perfect relationship with God, many years. And part of the reason is that there are so many complications of life. So often life throws curveballs at us. It could be an illness, a death in the family. It could be uh, relationship problems, work problems, societal problems. And the advantage of having this clear vision in your mind of what you want to do with your relationship with God is that when those when life turns into a raging river, uh, you don't get swept away by it. You've got that vision. Uh, and so when things do calm down, you're able to pick right back up again where you left off. A number of years ago, I attended a seminar that was taught by a fellow who's the author of a book called Quest for Quality. The Quest for Quality is a great book, by the way. And he described the power of vision as being like this. He said it was like you're standing on the banks of a river and the river is that raging torrent of life that goes by, all the turmoil and everything in our life, the challenges and the complications. The uh, other side of the river on the other bank is our spiritual palace. It's beautiful, it's gleaming, it's what we want to accomplish. And having a vision is like tying a rope to the corner of that palace. As we go across the stream of life, that vision is something we can hold on to so we don't get swept away. We don't lose track of that goal of, of pulling ourselves towards that great relationship with God. The Apostle Paul talked about something very similar in the passage that Nathan read and another passage as well. In his letter to the Hebrews, he said, let us run with determination the race that lies before us. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. And in his letter to the uh, Philippians, he wrote, I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I run straight toward the goal in order to win the prize, which is God's call through Christ Jesus to the life above. So both of these passages are really pointing to the same idea, that vision that we have of what we want to build towards in the future, that goal of what we want to have with God and for God helps us to run the race. It helps us to complete uh, the tasks that are ahead of us. So I want to ask you, what is your vision? What is your blueprint? Can you picture yourself having a perfect relationship with God? And if you picture it, what does it look like? Uh, can you picture what it would be like to serve God exactly how God would like you to serve? And what would that look like? Well, <clears throat> the good news is we don't need to have a crystal clear vision of exactly how it will be. We just need to know in our heart that this is what we want. And unlike building a physical palace in which we need a detailed plan of every aspect in advance. The adventure that we have with God is that God reveals his plan for us step at a time as we go along. God shows us as we live life 
what comes next and what God wants us to do. Uh, Our part is just to commit. Jesus said that we should walk on the narrow path that leads to God because the path is broad that leads to destruction. But we should walk on the narrow path. And if we have committed to God that we're going to walk on his narrow path, all we need to do is make ourselves available to God, and God will show us what comes next when the time is right. Now, through the prophet Jeremiah, 2,700 years ago approximately, God said to the people of Israel words that are still true for us today. And he said, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for your good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And we know that that's true, that God has a hope and a plan for each one of us. God sees us as we are and as we could be if we would just yield ourselves entirely to God. So I encourage you to set a vision for yourself, a goal for yourself, of building that kind of perfect relationship. Here's what my vision is. Here's the spiritual palace that I'm trying to build for myself. This is what it looks like for me. First off, that I don't sin against God by my thoughts, words, or actions, but also that I can feel God with me at all times, every moment that I'm awake, that I can feel God's Holy Spirit filling me with such spiritual power that when I lay hands on somebody for prayer, they're healed or their demon is driven away. Uh, That I am filled with the Holy Spirit so that I feel joy and peace and love overflowing at all times. And so that I am so tuned in to God that I can hear as God is directing my path day by day what God is saying to me. And I don't miss the signs that God is putting in front of me. That to me is what a perfect spiritual relationship with God looks like. It's kind of the uh, experience of the apostles in Acts. So if you and I'm sure you have, have committed that you're going to be one of those people that walks on the narrow path that leads to God. If you've committed to be on that narrow path and you're trying to build your great relationship with God, then God has already put that construction fence in place. God's already blessing you with his protection. And you have all the materials that you already need to begin construction. And you have the blueprint that you need to build. And so you're ready to begin. Many of us have already are in the process. But if you're ready to begin, and even if you're in the process, I have a prayer that I've given, which is at the bottom of your scripture quotes and notes sheets, and I'd like to ask you to pray it with me. And this is a prayer for vision and for what we need to build our spiritual palace with God. So let's pray this together now. Lord God, I thank you for your love for me, which has placed before the world began. I thank you and give you all praise, honor, glory, and love, that in your love and in your grace, you have called me to a close personal relation with you. Strengthen me in a continually clearer vision of what being in a perfect relationship with you looks like. Give me, Father, the passion for you, the integrity of character, the compassion for others, the patience and wisdom, the discernment I need to complete this journey and to build a spiritual palace for you and for me. Help me, Father, to base myself in your Holy Spirit and surround me with your Holy Spirit so that I am protected from going in any wrong directions, physically or mentally. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, so that I have the light and joy of God in me, for your joy is my strength. Cover me with your Holy Spirit, to protect me from anyone or anything that would cause me harm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.